Okay, well, let's begin with a word of prayer together as we read. Our Father, we pray that what we have learned last week will not be forgotten easily, that we will continue to give ourselves to ponder it, to ask for understanding and to practice the truths that we have learned into our life, that progress may be evident to all. And we pray that you would bless our time as we, uh, of Sunday school to learn further the lessons the Lord Jesus sought to impart to the disciples. Help us to also learn these lessons for ourselves. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, well, we are at chapter 18 uh, in Gospel of Matthew. And, and we ask, how come the, the disciples could not progress beyond a certain level? Is it like stuck? Did they have genuine faith? Yes. And a lot of the time people have genuine faith, but they go grow to a point and then they stop, they stagnate. And the moment you stagnate, you don't just stay there, you go down. Right? They tell you, if you see water that is stagnant water, don't drink it. It's, you, you're going to get sick. Survival skill 101. It has to be flowing, running water. Stagnant is never good. As in never. You know, in all parts of life, if you are a musician and you're just there, you don't progress further, you're stagnant. You watch. After a while, you'll be jaded, you'll be tired, you'll be... Yeah, you just... You, you have constantly have to increase, develop. In every aspect of life, how much more this thing called faith? Right? So why is it that the disciples cannot go beyond a certain level? Now, chapter 18 gives us a clue. It really gives us... Did they have a good teacher? Yes, the best ever, the Lord Jesus himself. Did they have the opportunities to progress? Absolutely. They were given a chance to serve. They tasted the power of God in their own life. They saw the miracles that were there. I tell you, the disciples had a wealth of opportunities. How come still cannot progress? Isn't it? It, it, it's not because they don't have the opportunity. It's not because they don't know. It's not because they don't have a good teacher. All those things were given to them in Christ, in the Lord Jesus. Literally, Jesus was physically there to teach them, to point out where the flaws are, to uh, encourage them. Every day, they could learn from the teacher. How come no progress? To me, that's quite scary. Because you have every opportunity, every reason, and yet no progress. Their, their problem was no progress was made. It's like they literally, they're just stuck there. What is it that is a problem? So we must read Matthew 18 very carefully. Right? And... This came as a question. Now, sometimes this is very, very hard to see. When people ask questions, now it's good to ask questions. And then as you talk to the person, and you begin to realize what the problem is. Why? Now, they were open. They were honest about it. They asked an honest question. They were not you know, hiding things. This is who they were. This is where frequent communication is important because you, can't, you may not be able to see this yourself. Right? And so the, they, they came to Jesus and then they said to the Lord, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Now that is an interesting question to raise to Jesus. Who then is greatest? Greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And then the Lord Jesus answered that question and said, and, and this is what the Lord, Jesus called a little child to him. 
Imagine, right? So some of the disciples were parents and they would have brought their children also to, right? This is to, to be there. Now, uh, we have a couple who does that at church too. Gloria and Ryan. Yeah, baby Eleanor also attends youth worship. You know, they just want to be there. And sometimes a little baby is also sitting there and, and, and she's, she's learned to be very, very good. You know, she'll sit there, not that she understands anything is going on. Right? So you imagine, were there, we often think the disciples, only adults, no children. Oh no, there were adults who were very, very keen and they, you know, they can't just dump their children at home, they bring them along and they were all listening. Now, there is a situation. And the Lord Jesus called a little child, the little child to himself, right? This is not a random kid from the street. It would have been one of the child of the disciples who were there, you know, listening, learning. And then uh, set this little child in the midst of them. Right? So there would have been a relationship between the Lord Jesus and the child too. Right? If a stranger calls a child, come. You know, child, children can be very, very shy. When I go to Bethany, and you know, it's because one year is usually, I, I don't go there all the time. So I go there for the March camp, I go there for youth conference. COVID time, I didn't go there for three years. And then the last time I went for family camp, they, uh, you know, the, the young adults, that, they were young people when I took them for youth conference. They have become young adults. And then they got married. So many things happened during COVID time. And then they got children. And so they bring their kid. This is my son. Huh, you have a son? <laughs> is it so long ago? <laughs> right? I, I couldn't, of course, could be there for the wedding. And then they got married. And they said, just want to bring you. This is years of friendship. And um, in, in fact, in March at the, their family camp, I had a nursery going. It's, you know, if there's such a thing, nursery, ministry. The parents were there and they all brought their children. They said, you know, it will be, is it all right? But baby might cry, you know, baby might sleep, baby might, we might be distracted. They said, look, it's okay. I do every Sunday. <laughs> I tune out distraction. Whether you're crying or sleeping, I, I will carry on preaching. And they were there. Right? So the parents will bring the little ones. And then, you know, so I will go and say hi. And then they'll run to their, the parent. I, I've never met you. I may be friends with the parents, but they're certainly not friends with me. They don't know me. This is a stranger. Imagine, come, 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 Caleb, come, come. He run away. And so it took one whole week. And on the last day of the church camp, right? Of course, every week I will, every day almost, you know, get them something, talk to them, smile with them, play with them a little bit. And then bit by bit, you learn to relate with them. The last week they will come to you, but too late, go home. It's time to go home. And <laughs> camp's over. And so when they come over to Perth, that's nice. They, see, I'm not a stranger anymore. All right? Did Jesus have such a ministry? Yes. We often think the Lord Jesus did not have a ministry to, with children, to children. He did. In fact, he taught his disciples how to care for children, how to reach out to children. Here is the greatest teacher in the world, and he has time for children. Yes. That's amazing. Now, he will call the little child and the little child will come to him and he will set him in the midst of them and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you disciples are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, what does this mean? Right? It's not asking you to become a child again. That's, you know, nobody can do that. Okay, be, it, be childish. It, it's not what it is. 
Now, what is Jesus teaching? Now, verse 4, Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. Now, what was this for them to think about? Right? Remember, whoever humbles himself. Now, this is what the Lord Jesus is uh, addressing them. You see, what is their problem? What is it that is stopping this progress? Now, this is one thing that is very hard to change. And that is this thing called mindset. You can have knowledge, you can listen, you can, but your mindset is fixed. You will not make any progress. It's the way you think. How were they thinking? Just like the world. Greatness. Right? They are asking, who in is the greatest? Are you serious? In your mind, you, you still that ambition of greatness, asking about greatness. You just got rebuked for unbelief. You were just rebuked for lack of faith. And deep down inside, you see, you can be rebuked. The, the mindset hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. Right? You imagine, how come I, you know, wow, you know, you correct, you stubborn. The, the mindset hasn't changed. They keep quiet. Right? Now, there, look at the mindset. You see, they are wise enough to, to, they know better than to desire greatness in the world. They didn't say, who is the greatest in the world? Of course, they are disciples. They are not going to say, who is greatest in the world? Right? But their question, who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? You're just using spiritual language for the same thing. What's the difference? You see, it's the world kind of mindset transferred into religious context. But still same mindset. You look at the world today. The mindset is that of position. Everybody is vying for position. They want to be the CEO. They want to be the chairman. They want to be the director. What is my position? Wow, they feel they have arrived. Right? Until problems come, then they're in serious. You want to be CEO? Then take the responsibility of the CEO. Now, that is not the concern. That concern is greatness. That's the mindset very much of the world. And guess what? The disciples have this mindset inside them. They were vying for power. They were vying for position. Who is the greatest? Right? Does this ha can this happen? All the time. Can it happen in the church? Sadly, yes. Wrong mindset. You take a mindset of the world and you try to serve the Lord. You're going to fail. You're going to get stuck there. You will find you're not going to progress beyond a certain level. It doesn't work. A mindset of the world does not fit into the kingdom of heaven. And so the Lord Jesus had to correct them yet again. Remember what Paul says, right? This is why Paul taught the Philippian church, because they got to be careful. They may be doing well, they may be doing all right, they may have grown, but if their mindset is just like the world, they're going to end up stagnant too. And so Paul says to the Philippians, chapter 2, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, did not consider it a robbery. Jesus is equal with God, and yet he humbled, he made himself of no reputation. See, his concern is not the reputation and glory of the world. 
a lot of people are concerned. I, I, wow, reputation, glory, greatness. Jesus is not concerned. He is not going to waste his time being concerned about reputation and glory. His concern is he is a servant of the Lord and he's going to fulfill all that God has called him to do. That's his heart. That's his mindset. Remember this. Servant is not a title. Servant is your heart and spirit. His title is king. His title is son of God. His title is Christ. The highest title. No one can have it. But his heart, servant. God has given to me this title. How do I go about it? Mindset, servant. He humbled himself. Right? How do you know Jesus is truly humble? He became obedient to even to the point of death. How obedient are we to the Lord? We know that this is what we must do and we don't do it. Right? Oh, it takes up too much of my time. It takes up too much of my energy. It might, I might get sick. I might even risk my life. Oh, cannot, cannot serve there. The Lord was obedient to the point of death. Humble. Every time we think we're humble, read this text, they think, wow, that is, that's humble. Humility? Yes. Mindset. This was the mindset of Christ. At this point, the disciples had no such mindset. Their mindset was a mindset of the world. Right? Who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Sounds great. Sounds very spiritual. But the Lord Jesus is very discerning. They are far from spiritual. They're just still vying for greatness out there. Right? Now, you've got to see this problem all the time in the world, in, in families, in like all the time, position, standing. Because so many are so caught up with positions. Bethany is one of those very, very special places because I keep referring to Bethany because I've not been to many places like that. Is where you go and there are people who are serving you outside. They are real CEOs. They are the person who are, is a car park attendant, could be the chief of the army of Singapore. Right? And that is true because the person wa was in his previous post. So one day during a wedding, this, he was serving as a wedding traffic marshal. One of the guests was one of the, is a captain in the army. He saw the chief. He saluted. <laughs> they tell him, please don't salute here, especially when you're driving. <laughs> How do not salute? This, this guy is a big chief out there. He's, this one is the CEO of hospital. This one is, wow, what are they all doing? Chopping chicken, serving, mopping, wherever area. They are not concerned about these things. What mindset? Christ, we are servants of the Lord. That's why this is so special. Right? Not every time you get to rub shoulders with some of the most high-ranking officers in the government. And there are no heirs. Hey, this is a Sunday school teacher. It's, it's like everybody. There's no heir. There's no position. There's nothing. There's serving the Lord. Right? You could be cleaning with somebody who is up there and there we go. Why? Mindset, Christ. If Christ being the King of Kings come to serve, who are you? You are just some CEO. Who do you think you are? And we understand that this is who we are. We follow the example of Christ. How wonderful is that? Yeah, there will always be people who are very arrogant. They are, well, you know, this is who I am. They, you know, this is who well, you do. You know who I am. One day, this person, you are a very arrogant person, came in, and you know, wow, he says, "Do you know who I am?" He got upset. He didn't serve him properly. 
And the person was very, very quick. He says, sir, if you don't know who you are, how do I know who you are? <laughs> you got amnesia. You got dementia. If you have forgotten who you are, how do I know? Right? I remember bringing CAF to an organization. It's a wonderful organization. It's, it's, uh, it's for the visually impaired. And they have all kinds of gadgets. You, know, you, didn't th you don't think about these things until you, know, you, you, you help someone who is affected, visually impaired. How do they make a hot drink? You don't know how far you're going to pour. How much hot water to pour before you burn yourself? How? They have a special gadget somebody invented. It's a very simple thing. You put there, and you pour the hot water up to a certain level, it will make a sound. And then, you know, stop. I thought, that is very, very interesting gadget. All kinds of things. Audio, you know, you can play, it reads books to you. There's even one, there's a, a screen. Is, is, you have magnifying glass. This is a serious magnifying thing. It's a TV screen you put under, and it magnifies. I think, I don't know how many, it's definitely more than 100. Maybe a thousand. And so he's given. Go ahead, use it. Of course, they got guide dogs and all kinds of things. So I saw one person who was serving us. And she had a, 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 a little ta name tag, VIP. Now, when you see VIP, what do you think about? Very important person. This is VIP sitting. This is VIP kappa. So I said to her, wow, you are a VIP. She's, just, you know, she's at the reception, serving us. How come the VIP is serving us? What does VIP mean? And then she said, it just say, tells you that I, I am a visually impaired person. VIP, visually impaired person. So if I stumble a little, please forgive me because I'm actually visually impaired. That thing never you know, stuck in my head. Every time I see people who think they are VIP, visually impaired person. <laughs> you, what do you think you see? Why do you want to be a visually impaired person? All right. So when people come to our church, is there VIP seating? What VIP? You can sit wherever you wish. You want to sit next to me, you can. No VIP. I was invited to a church and I was stunned, right? And then, this is not Bethany, it was a church here. It was you know, to a friend and could you come and attend this thing, you know, and, and say, okay, it's a Friday night. On Sunday, the answer is no, because I have my own church to go to. Other time, okay, to support you. Then, I'm on the VIP list. <sighs> my heart sunk. I'm not visually impaired person. You get to sit right at the stop. I, I don't want to. All right. So we made it a point. There is no VIP. Why? We have, what is our mindset? Servanthood. Right? This is what Christ was seeking to teach his disciples, but they were so stuck. If the mindset doesn't change, watch, you will find you will not progress beyond a certain level. If you don't have the mindset of Christ, you're going to be stuck. You may have the skill, you may have the opportunity, you may be serving, stuck. You may be called apostles, stuck. Remember, by this time, they were called apostles. Stuck. Right? That mindset. They, they have been like this for the longest time. Unless that mindset change, you're not going to progress beyond a certain level. And so the Lord Jesus has to tell them, has to tell you very frankly, assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted, you need to change this mindset. Right? Unless you are converted, you are talking like an unbeliever, an unconverted person. He's telling the disciples, you need to be converted. Huh? Are they not converted? Are they not believers? Yeah, partially converted. They're not fully converted. The mindset hasn't been converted. Right? 
So when we come to faith in Christ, how much of us is truly converted to the Lord? Right? Our belief system may be converted. Last time we don't believe in God, now we believe in God. We, last time we don't believe in Christ, now we believe in Christ. Okay, that's just one part. But what about your mindset? It's still the same. Same whole mindset. It's just transferred into a now a religious context. It's not going to work. Right? It's not going to work. So when we want to become members of the church, what's your mindset? Same. Whether it's in Bethany or Bethel, we share same mindset. Same. Are you willing to serve humbly? Why? Tape, clean tables, clean this, clean... Huh? You ask me to clean, do you know who I am? I would say to you, if you don't know who you are, how shall I know? You could be a high flyer outside. Here, we learn to serve. You learn to clean. You learn to do all these things. Not just for the young. We've seen some of the, those who are mature people out there, and they learn to serve. To me, that is a wonderful... You're, we're learning the right minds. And you watch. You will progress. You will progress in your life. You will progress in your faith. You will progress. You're still the CEO outside, but a very different kind of CEO. A very different kind of CEO that the world rarely sees. And we have seen them succeed out there. Very different mindset. This is the mindset of Christ. Not like the world. Right? So we see, and unless you are converted and become as little children, what does that mean? You will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Don't talk about greatness. You don't even know the basics. The basics principle to enter the kingdom of heaven. What was lesson number one? Matthew 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You don't even have this. Go back to lesson number one. That was the very first thing Jesus taught them. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Right at the top. Are you poor in spirit? Don't talk about greatness. You don't even have lesson number one mastered properly. Go back to lesson number one. You're not even going to enter. Wrong mindset. Unless you are converted and become like a little child. Now, what does that mean, like a little child? Okay, it's not be childish because children can be really immature, childish. You see, what does Jesus meant? Right? So from time to time, we receive videos of my little nephew in Christmas Island, Lachlan. And he is one happy boy. Everything, you know, he doesn't have a lot of toys. Everything is toy to him. He'll chase the red crab and he's very fast, crawl. He doesn't run, he crawls. His father, you know, look at that, brings him to the beach. And he, this is a hermit crab is big. He goes and touch it, fearless. Right? His happiest time is when he gets to eat. He ah, smiles and he's just so happy. How come this boy is so happy? He belongs to a very loving family. Right? The father, okay, mother, she works. Father, stay behind, looks after. We can switch roles. Father gets to do his thing now. Mother is going to look after the little boy. And he has two parents that loves him, that cares for him, feed him all the good things, and brings him out. He's not just tucked away somewhere, caged up. He grow. he is there. You look at this guy, he's a little giant. You know. He's so big, size. Ryan, hey, we cannot wait to see him because, wow, yeah, he's just really solid, eating all those stuff, good stuff. The father is a really good cook. Cooks all the healthy things, better than the mother cooking. But Steph can cook, he can cook better. <laughs> all right? 
not to discredit my sister. But she, you know, hers good, this one better. But you see, parents that are there, that's what a child, when we belong to a loving family, you know what, we're just happy. That's the mindset of Christ. Right? Believers, is there anything to be unhappy? We belong to the kingdom of God. We have God as our father. We belong to a loving family. And you're not happy? Why? Why? See, this is what the Lord is trying to do. Blessed are you. Yeah, this is the kingdom of heaven. Not happy. Why? Mindset. Still not kingdom mindset yet. Still worldly mindset. Worried about this, worried about that, worried about this thing, worried about what not making it, worried. See, there are so many worries. And so the Lord had to think, why are you are worrying over all these things? What you shall eat, what you shall drink, what clothes. You're worried half the time. Not kingdom mindset yet. Unless you are converted, that mindset's got to be really changed. Otherwise, you may have faith, but it's just stuck. Right? Part conversion. There, but not there. You're not going to go beyond. You're, you're just worried. You're just upset. You're just, oh, I wish. See, I'm in church, but I, I should be outside. I should be progressing in my career. I should be this. I should be. You're torn between two worlds. You're torn between two worlds. Look at that. The, the child don't know. The, see, they're not vying for greatness. They are just happy when they are brought up in a loving family. They feel safe. That's what Lachlan feels. He feels safe. He's a brave little creature. You know, some kids are scared of grass, touch the grass. Ew. This guy is you know, he's all over the place. Sand, grass, sea, literally. He's not scared. Why? Not because he's got no sense. He knows that he's not far from the protection of his father and the mother. You feel safe. And when a child feels safe, they're happy. They will progress very quick. And this boy is progress leaps very fast. Wow, well, we, we're observing this. How come? Well, look at the parents. They are there for him. Now, I, I say to them often, well, Steph, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're t really just turning out to be a wonderful mother. It really is. And David, a wonderful father. And you know, look at that. And the result, it's evident to all. We see this in a little boy. I say, but transfer this into spiritual life. Right? That relationship with God as father is for real. Should we not be happy? That we have a spiritual family that we belong to. You know, it's how wonderful that is. Right? Why are we vying for power? We worried this. What are you doing? Right? Now, well, there we go. Then he tells them, you will by no means enter. Now, they, this is what they need to do. Convert. Please. Unless you are converted. This part not converted. You remain like unconverted. You are Christian talking like a non-Christian. And a lot of people who are like that. Right? Technically, they are Christians. They are baptized. They go to church. They may be even serving. But the way you think is unchristian. <laughs> Very unchristian. Unless you are converted and become like this as a little child. Look at that. You will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Please don't talk greatness. You're not even there. Right? You have to enter first. You're not even there. So if you think you're there, you're not even there. Now, then he tells them, verse 4, Therefore, this is the real... Whoever humbles himself as this little child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Right? Now, what does that mean? That lesson of human. Remember, this is Philippians 2. Paul caught this. 
and encourage the church. This is the mindset. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ. That's what Jesus has been teaching them. Unless you humble yourself. Jesus' example, he humbled himself. The Lord Jesus is not childish. He is not childlike. What is it? Humble. That is, he is wise. He is discerning. He is mature. Humble. That is a lesson that we need all need to learn uh, well, unless who ever humble as this little child is the greatest. You want to talk about, you know what's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Is to have no ambition of greatness at all. Can you do that? And a lot of people cannot. Inside them, they want to, I want to be the greatest, I want to be this, this is ambition. You want to be greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Serve humbly. Serve humbly. Like a little child, humble. Right? Now, there is, takes on another aspect of humility. One is mindset, there is humility, right? Ambition. What ambition? You want to be greatest in the kingdom of God? Banish this kind of mindset. It's not to have this at all. The child does not have this kind of mindset. Right? Now, then we go on to the next part where he tells them, Right now, whoever this is ministering, mindset must flow to action. If you all say this is mindset, it will affect your action. How do you go about doing things? Then they are connected. Your action will tell you the kind of mindset you really have. Now, watch this. This he tells them, whoever receives one little child like this in my name, receives me. Dad, you want to learn how to serve the Lord humbly? You try. Serve at children ministry. What does it mean to serve in children ministry? Do you know how to receive a little child? Do you know how to care for one person? We look at a children ministry, look at it as a class. Okay, we got there, prepared my lesson, I teach, 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 then I move on. That's not serving. That's not ministry. One it doesn't escape. One little child. Each one is precious in your sight. They're precious to God. They're precious to you. You come down to their level. Not they come up to you, you come down to them. You care for them, you look after them, and they come to you. You lead them, you guide them, you receive them. It's not easy to receive people. This is something that you know, a lot of people, we don't, we don't know how to receive, we don't know how to open our hearts to people. We shut our hearts to people. We serve, but our heart is not open. I'm not open to people. You're not open. How do you serve without a, with a heart closed like this? You're just doing your task. That's it. Right? You're just transferring what you do outside in the world into church. Right? No, but I don't open my heart out there. I don't open my heart anywhere. How do you... How do you serve? You can't. You want to learn how to really serve? This was where I began to children ministry. I, well, I got so many things. I, I could be better. Why you only give me one small little children ministry to look after? You can't even take care of them. Forget about the rest. Learn, and I learned to love the little ones, care for the little ones, share story with the little ones. 
And it was wonderful. I still remember, I, Hui Min will also remember that, you know, it was a kindergarten ministry that Bethany used to have. Now cannot, because the government is buying all the kindergartens. You cannot survive. But before that, Bethany used to have a kindergarten ministry. And one of our highlights, right? Can you imagine upstairs, we're studying prophetic writings with Pastor Charlie. I mean, these thoughts are like, whew, you get... You, you, after one hour, you're lost. You know, your mind is like aching. And then the next time you're downstairs reading story, Three Little Pigs to the Kids. Well, you know, what do you, how do you learn? You learn the mind of a scholar, the heart of a pastor, the spirit of a prophet. It's life changing. Unless you convert and become. You, cannot, you will not survive in this ministry. You will not survive serving the Lord. And so you, okay, Lord, you help me to change. I cannot change on my own. You've got to change my mindset. You've got to help. I've got to be like this. We learn to care for the little ones. So we read books. We bring them on excursion. And you've got a good heart all open. You're there, presently doing all these things. And in your mind, I've got assignment to do. I've got this to do. I've got to prepare a message. I've got to do... <sighs> no, you're there. And you learn to care for them. They're important. Is this important or is it a waste of your time? They're important. You cannot care for one of these little ones. Don't talk greatness. Just begin somewhere. Right? Now, that is that if you receive, now that is special. Whoever receives one little child like this. You know what? The Lord Jesus say, and you receive this little child in my name. That is such the, the greatest joy and privilege is to see little ones come to Jesus. Because when you do that, the Lord Jesus say, you receive me. That's how important it is. Children ministry. And people don't realize how vital this ministry is. Right? And it's hard to find people to serve in children. They want to serve here. They want to do... What about children ministry? Oh, you know what? No time. I do got no skill. I got nothing. I got What is it that takes... So the, the Lord Jesus is asking, do you know how to be humble? Do you know how to receive? Do you know how to care? These are the lessons that are needed. Right? You want to learn to be outstanding? You really want to progress? You really want to be great in the kingdom of God? Then learn to do this. This is a very different mindset. Okay, so don't imagine, have no ambition of greatness, meaning oh, be content, be stagnant. That's not what Jesus is saying. Don't have that mindset of the world. You will want a mindset of Christ if you want a mindset of the kingdom is very different. This is the mindset he's teaching. You really want to progress? Look, look how the Lord served in humility. Look at the heart. Please don't think there's no skill required to speak to children. The hardest messages for preparation, I find. When I was training, I spoke in bilingual. I spoke in the main, or not main worship, but I spoke in teens worship, spoke in evening worship, children worship. From the very young to the mid, because their children ministries got like over 100 kids. So it's all divided up. The hardest message to prepare is offered to the little ones. How do you bring this truth in a way they can, you know, enjoy? And they can know the Lord and they are drawn to the Lord. They are led to the Lord. It's it's very hard. First, they cannot even read. Second, they open the Bible, they're confused. They look at you, they smile. What's happening? So you use, you learn to be very dynamic. 
in engaging them, in telling stories, and bring in the message. Believe me, it's harder to prepare that than to prepare for evening service to teach Sunday school teachers. Their evening service is usually all the Sunday school teachers, all who serve. Bethany used to have two services, one in the morning, one in the evening, because there are so many Sunday school teachers and so many people serving. They have a service just for people who are serving in the evening. Got morning, they're serving everywhere. How do you feed them evening? So evening, the messages are always more challenging, deeper, at a very deeper level, much at a deeper level. That is easier than to teach children because it's not a question of teaching. Can you get this message across? Can you bring this across? It's not about your content. You can have the right content, you can have the right everything, and you've lost them. How do you bring it across? How do you help them feel loved by the Lord? It's not easy. How do you help them actually, a child, to be received by the Lord? They feel so happy to be received. They feel so privileged. Not easy. So whoever receives this little child in my name receives me. Right? That is something that we are to consider very, very, very much. Okay, so as we look at this, how come disciples, no progress? Did they have faith? Yes. But that faith has come to a point where it just stopped. It's literally on a standstill. They were ineffective in ministry. They were not able to exercise their faith in times of crisis. They don't know how to talk to answer questions. They're basically useless, Right? Until to the point, you might as well have, say you have no faith. It's like a faith that is not even useful. You don't know what to do with it. Right? So at the youth conference, we're helping the teens. There's about 90 teens who have signed up. How do you use this faith that of yours? And a lot of young people don't know how to use their faith. They've just been told, believe, believe, believe. Hey, what does that mean? Believe, okay, I believe, believe. How does it work in practical terms? They need to be instructed. This is how you can actually use this faith in your life. Right? So we're going to be there, whether it's the 16-year-old, whether it's the 15-year-old, whether it's the 18-year-olds. Same. It's got to be real, it's got to be relevant. How do you use it? It's not more teaching more knowledge. They can get that every week, every weekend. But how do you get down to actually using this faith? What are the practical steps that I'm looking forward to sharing with my group? There are five. Five things you can do, actually do. Right? And it's something that, I, you know, you just, just look at it again. This is so refreshing, so practical. Oh, you learn. You learn to serve. You learn to have a mindset. Cannot, mindset of the world, you're not going to make it. You're not going to progress. You need the mindset of Christ. Now, will you humbly learn? Would you humbly serve? Would you obey the Lord? Right? If we don't know how to obey, see, we've got to learn step number one. If we can't even do the first step, we're just stuck. Same, unless you are converted and become like this little child. Look at him. He is happy. He feels safe in the arms of Jesus. He just, you know, there's a loving family who's brought him to the Lord. This is a loving family. This is a happy child. Can you be like that? In a spiritual context, right? There's a sense of love, there's a sense of happiness, a sense of contentment, there's a sense of joy, knowing the Lord, coming to the Lord. The child will feel so happy to come to, wow, the Lord, you know, to come to Him and be there. He's just very happy. We 
don't know how to come to the Lord and be very happy anymore. Right? We're just filled with all kinds of problem, 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 worry, 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 worry. The joy is absolutely God. This is where every Christmas, hopefully, my prayer for the church is renew this joy. You don't renew, you, it dies. Like a lot of my plants at home. Say, I have to renew the soil. I have to renew the... I have to pre- renew! And then the... You know, plants can be very happy and they will tell you they're happy. They, the leaves are up. The plants can tell you they're very sad. The leaves are all down. So, wow, you know, finally getting into gardening and it's bringing me some happiness, right? To see them fruit, to see them green, to see them not dead, it's taken me a while. But part of it is renew, renew, renew. I'll share about renew more in the pulpit message. We need that renew. We don't renew, we... I don't know, go... We will return to our old ways. Okay, we don't want. Right? Okay, any question? So over to you. You want to ask anything uh, to understand this text, to appreciate that. So sometimes we think, okay, become like a little child. Be simple. No, please don't be simple. Right? Don't reach too much Bible. Because children have little knowledge. This is not about being childish or being simplistic. It is read further. Look at that. Be humble. Have the mindset of Christ. Look at that. The happiness the trust, the joy of being in the arms of Jesus. Look at that. This is all missing. This was in this little child. He's just happy, right? To be received by the Lord. Somebody can do this in my name. You know what? That's serving. Right? And this is, it's taken me many years to understand this, by the way. Many years of serving what does it mean to receive someone in the name of the Lord? From children to adults to older ones. And it is a really humbling experience because the focus is not you. It really isn't you. You receive it in, not in your own name, in the name of the Lord. And the Lord's encouragement is, if you do this, you receive me. I want to receive the Lord. It renews my heart. It renews my mind. So every Christmas, right? I remember the story. The inn was full. They rejected the Lord. Too full. And it always reminds me, is my heart so full that there's no room for Jesus? My life is so full, there's no room for the Lord. Can I receive? The children's songs are sung like this. I want to receive the Lord every Christmas. I want to make sure He is going to be there. Receive the Lord. If you receive one little one in my name, you receive me. That's how you do it. Right? Okay, over to you for questions. You ask anything you wish. Five minutes. Okay, Josh, go ahead. Um, yeah. Is it right also, if I think, if I am um, thinking the way I say it, if I want to be the greatest in the heaven, yeah. and yeah. I will follow yeah. like what you say, to be yeah. humble, to be um, right. like the children, if I follow that, yeah. will I be still correct? If I yeah. have that mind of the, yeah. to be the greatest of You see, of their heaven? problem was greatness. You know, see, to hmm. us, who is the greatest? <laughs> we don't really bother. The greatest is, of course, God. The greatest, rightfully, is the Lord Jesus. Why even the house? You know what? I just want to be humbly serving wherever I am, wherever I can. Up there in heaven, you are going to be with Moses and Elijah and Paul and Peter. And I want to be the greatest. Are you serious? <laughs> are you kidding me right now? I vanish the thought. I don't want to even uh, just hum- that's what they- just serve humbly, right? Just serve humbly. He's using that. that you really want to be greatest? Then serve humbly. Right? It's not about promoting greatness. It's just just serve humbly. Let's serve with a heart of joy. We serve with a heart of love for the Lord. We serve. It just like little. It just. 
you can be very happy. So, you know, every time you feel, you look at the video of this little boy and he's so happy. He's happy with basically nothing. He's got nothing. He's got a foam that is not really a toy. It's his father's exercising thing. And he's shaking it around. And then he sees a hermit crab and he grabs it. He's happy with very little in his life. Because he lives in Christmas Island, he really has very little in his life. He cannot go and buy toys just like that. He cannot. Everything is... He's, but you know what? He's got his father and his mother. And he's a happy boy. He's a really happy boy. They cannot be there 24 hours watching him. They will go crazy. But they just, whatever time, they love him, they care for him, they give, cook him good. It's just happy. See, that's what it is. It's not, what greatness? What are you thinking about? What greatness? Greatness, the Lord. Greatness. <laughs> there are many people, and you want to be the greatest? Oh, what are you thinking? They have Peter. You just witnessed Moses and Elijah. You want to be greater than Moses and Elijah? Why the thought? Do you see? That mindset has to be changed. The best. Convert. The word is be converted. <laughs> like a little child. A little child is not interested in greatness. The greatest person in the little child's life, you know, is who? Is the mummy and the daddy. It is, I, of course, I miss those days. <laughs> Where we are, you know, the, the parent is the funniest, is your best friend, is everything. The child is just oh, so happy. See, the, see, are so happy. But when they become teens, it's a different thing. <laughs> it's not the, no longer the greatest. But see, that's why the child is. Right? You are their hero. You are the strongest. You are the wisest. You are the funniest. You bring them so much joy. I don't think Steph is very funny. But Lockie does. He just looks at the mother and literally laughs for a good two minutes. <laughs> He's just so happy, laughing. And I'm like, what is Steph actually doing? <laughs> you know? So, you know, you can make all kinds of faces. He might look at you and cry. But the mother is just, the, you know, is everything. is the happiest. You look at the mother, she's just happy. Look at the father, she's just happy. Little, he's just tickled. It just expresses his joy and laughter. That's what it is. Right? That's what it is. That's a telltale sign, the joy of the Lord that is obviously there. You know, this morning's message will be about that. Look at Jesus, the joy that was inside him. He had to go through so much, and yet joy. A joy that was set before him. Wow, that is amazing. That is why the Lord Jesus is, is my greatest inspiration. Not, nothing, no one comes close. You want to be greater than that? No one comes close. Okay? All right, good. Any, any other questions? Go ahead, uh, Christine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, last one. <laughs> yeah. Um. Mindset and humility. Yeah, it goes together. The uh, mindset. It is let not, this Christ. Let this mind be in you. The mindset yeah, of Christ. Yes. This this is not based yeah. on your willpower to have <laughs> no. that mindset. Yeah. It's prayer, isn't it? Yeah. That God yeah. will change yeah. your mindset. You see, the mindset is a way of thinking. That's what a mindset is. The way you think, and it's hard to change on your own. This is where the word is: be converted. It's like we cannot convert ourselves. The Lord has to convert us. Right? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Have you let the, God, the power of God's word change you? You'll convert your soul. The soul is impossible to convert. The mindset, impossible to convert. Very People don't change their mind. They are like fixed. You watch them, the way they are. That's how they think. That's how they respond to the world. That's how they see their world. It takes the power of God to change a person's life. With all my heart. Willpower, I've tried. I've tried. Believe me, I have tried everything. Couldn't change myself. I didn't like my mindset, but I couldn't change it. 
It's salvation. It's the Lord. Change me. I want to read. I want to be drawn to the Lord. I want to be inspired by the Lord. If I can be draw close to the Lord, may He influence me more. My heart, my mindset, all the time. Am I done? No. Don't want to go back to my old ways. Okay. All right, thank you. While we pray together. Our Father, we thank you for the questions that have been raised up. And we pray that we would look to the Lord Jesus truly as our wonderful example of that mindset that he had of a humble servant. May we desire this for ourselves. May we look at the Lord Jesus and be greatly inspired all over again by his refreshing example. And we pray that our hearts will be uplifted this Christmas to rediscover the joy of this faith in him. We ask that you would bless as we take a bit of a break, have breakfast, and then prepare ourselves for worship. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.